This part of Texas was brought to you by ERA, a combination of powerful cleaners concentrated in a quarter cup. ERA helps get all... So nice, just slip away like dreams you're not really sure you had. And happiness seems so hard to find in this crazy world where dreams can fall apart so fast. Why does this one last? Maybe cause it's time. You're not pulling my leg, TJ. This is what you really want to say? Ruby, this is exactly what I want. I think this is my reward for having stayed up all night watching this telephone. <laughs> well, for this amount of money, you could get Mrs. Belvin Arena up there to do a striptease. Well, maybe I'll reconsider. <laughs> you know what I want, Ruby. Okay, TJ, I'll make sure it gets on. Good. Look, everyone's been doing a wonderful job. <laughs> Billy Joe sounds great. Yeah. How do you feel after being up all night? Well, my ear is a little tired from Washing talking on the phone, but other than that, I'm fine. We're getting closer and closer to our goal. Yeah, so I, see. I think your donation's going to put us right up the top. Yeah. That's great. That's great, Ruby. Okay, oh, listen, one other thing. Uh, I want to give this anonymously. Oh, my lips are sealed. And TJ, I'll make sure you get one. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Ruby. Bye. Bye-bye. Dear, settle in for the treat of your life. You're kidding. She's going to do it. Absolutely. Ah, TJ, I can't wait. Don't you think what we're doing is just a little bit mean, though? It's only for charity. Yeah, who are you trying to kid? Hey, look at it. <laughs> this is all done out of the goodness of my heart. Uh-huh, uh-huh, sure. Now, <laughs> what would you like for breakfast to go along with our upcoming entertainment? You need some eggs, toast, something like that? For breakfast? Oh, Teacher, I've had enough popcorn and pizza to last me for about a month. I think maybe I should do <laughs> Good, though. <laughs> I'm glad you decided to come back here and watch the telephone with me. I am, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Billy Joe, that song was terrific. And ladies and gentlemen out there, we're getting real close to our projected goal right now, so please call in those donations. Yeah, let me remind you once again, the telephone number to call is 555-KVIK, all right? We got some more donations here? We sure do. Right here on the top of the list, I got a lady by the name of Pat Weaver who sent in $500. Pat, thank Woo! you very much. Thank you, Pat. I'll tell you, with a donation like that, we're going to go right over the top. Excuse me a minute, Billy Joe. Name off. Call off the rest of them there, buddy. Okay, we got an angel told We're not going to believe this. Mama, KVIK may be going off the air, but we're going off with a bang. Look at that. I know. We it's raised more money just this year than we ever had. Wonderful. We're going to get all the air here for you. Excuse me there, Billy Joe. Just one second. We just had a request for a for a performance and a promise of a donation that's going to send us way over the top. All right. Technical. The donation is for five thousand dollars. $5,000. So let's bring up a lady who's going to give us a wonderful performance. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for <laughs> Miss Mildred Canfield. Come on out here, Mildred. Come on up here. By the shores of Gitche by the shine and big sea water, to the wigwam of Nokomis, daughter of the moon, Nokomis. Goodbye. Bye Don't bye. be late. No, all right. Uh, Judith, yeah. I want to talk to you for a minute. All right, what is it? There's going to be a New Year's Eve party at KVIK tonight. It's the last day that Vicky has control of the station. Well, I understand if, if you'd like to go. I'll be fine. Vivian will take care of me. No, no, I plan to go. I want you to come with me.
Texas, the new generation. The first part. You must be joking. I can't believe that you would suggest I go to that party. No, no, I'm not joking. I think you ought to get out of the house. It'll be good for you. But Grant, to go to KVIK and be humiliated with all those people staring at me? Well, what's the alternative, Judith? What are you going to do? You're going to avoid these people for the rest of your life? You can't just lock yourself up in the house forever? You have no idea what you're asking me to do. Oh, yes, I do. I know exactly what I'm asking. I know it's difficult for you. I've been thinking a lot about it. I think that you should go out and see what your friends are like. They won't react to you any differently from what they have. What makes you think they won't? Because they are your friend. Grant, I don't... I don't think I can. Of course you can. They all know. They know about George and me. Judith, I wonder... if you're just embarrassed to be seen in your chair. No, it's not that. It's just too soon. Please try to understand, and I don't want it to stop you from going to the party. All right. You can always change your mind. I won't be late. Goodbye, Vivian. So long, Mr. Wheeler. Mrs. Wheeler, would you like some more tea now? Yes. Are you all right? Yes, why? Because you seem kind of quiet. I was wondering if you were still kind of upset about that reporter showing up. No. Well, that's good. I'm glad. I just want you to be happy. We all want you to be happy. Mr. Mark, Mr. Wheeler, Miss Brett, Miss Ruby. You are so lucky to have so many people worried about you. Yes. I'm so lucky. Thus departed Hiawatha, Hiawatha the Beloved, in the glory of the sunset, in the purple mists of evening to the region of the home wind, of the northwest wind, Kiwaden, to the islands of the blessed, to the kingdom of Ponima, to the land of the hereafter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great, little just great. Thank you. <laughs> no, it certainly was. And the really terrific news about this is that your class act has brought in an anonymous donation of $5,000, ladies right. and gentlemen. That's right. That is incredible. $5,000. Yes, sir. That's a real feather in your cap, Mr. Kemp. Well, I don't speaking. need no more than that, do I? <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. As a matter of fact, though, what you've done is really, really terrific because what you've done here is catapulted us over our projected goal. Right now, everybody, take a look at the tote board. Yes. What do we have here? $102,752! And you know, that's good news for all of us hardworking people who've been here. The folks have been generous and great, and that means they get to go home and get some well-deserved rest. That's right, but before we do go home, we just want to thank all you folks out there for tuning in and for helping us out with your pledges. That's right, you've all been so generous, and I'm sure the United Charities of Houston wants to thank you, too. And also, let's don't forget to thank Mrs. Bellman and Rena Becker for organizing this year's telethon. Uh, yeah! They did a terrific job of this year. Thank you. I guess that's about it, Billy Joe. Looks like it to me, too. So listen, everybody, thank you very much. Good night. God bless. You want to say good morning? <laughs> hey, are you yeah. so tired you forgot? Oh, yeah. Good night. Good morning. Whatever. So long. Oh, but this is our wonderful one, Rena the rest of the day. Oh. Attention, everyone. May I please have your attention? Please, thank you. Before you all leave, I want to tell you how much I appreciate your help on this telethon. As you can see by the figures on the tote board, it's been an enormous success, and you've all done a, a marvelous job. Billy Joe, Ricky, the girls on the telephones, I mean, the, the entire crew. Thank you. You've, you've just been wonderful. Now, you all know about the big New Year's Eve party tonight. So I think we should all go home and get some rest so we can have a wonderful time this evening. All right! Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank
It isn't fair, Mama. There are a lot of things in this business that aren't fair, honey. Yeah. You're right about that. But I still think you shouldn't have lost KVIK. Your shows are just too good to be off the air. This telethon has always been one of my favorite projects. I've been able to do it every year. Raise money for such a good cause. Oh. Oh, boy. I better get myself in a better mood for this party tonight. <clears throat> Let me take you out for breakfast. I'd like that very much. What are we waiting for? She got every line right. Yeah. <laughs> Told you she knew it all by heart. You wouldn't believe me. Well, I just couldn't believe that anybody could memorize all of Hiawatha. Well, How did you know that she knew it? <laughs> she used to recite it to me when I was a kid. The whole thing? Well, I heard it all once or twice, but then I wised up, and whenever she tried it again, <laughs> I would pretend that I'd fall asleep after the first oh. couple of lines. You had to pretend? I practically fell asleep watching her here on the television. <laughs> Oh, T.J., promise me you won't tell her that. Oh, don't worry, I won't. <laughs> I mean, that's quite an accomplishment. It's very difficult. All those Indian names, it's tough. <laughs> I wonder why she learned it. Well, she told me that she did it uh, in a pageant when she was a little girl. You're kidding. <laughs> no. I'm sorry, I can just imagine your mother. She probably had a little headdress even then. Oh, no, listen, it was much worse than that. No, she had, no, she had the full costume. She had a black wig, beads. Oh, no, uh, she you're had, kidding. no, listen, leather moccasins, leather skirt, the whole... You know, my grandmother was telling me that when she was a little girl, she loved that costume so much that she used to wear it to school. No. Oh, I just don't see your mother as the type of person who could get into leather. Little leather yeah. dress, mm -hmm. little leather moccasins. <laughs> It's been a terrific evening, yeah. morning or whatever Mor it is. Morning, mm. morning, officially. Yeah, it's been a pretty terrific evening and morning for me, too. I feel like we're finally getting to know each other again. Yeah, I've been thinking the same thing. You know, I was just remembering all the good times we had together. I've wasted so much time. I'm feeling a lot better now, though. I'm feeling better, too. Good. Maybe we can be friends. Maybe now we can really get to know each other. I think we've already started to do that. I guess we have. You know, if we're I'm really going to start with a clean slate, though. There's something I have to tell you. Been a little ashamed all morning that I haven't told you about it. All right, what is it? By the shores of Gichigumi. By the big clean waters. No, by the no, little wigwam. No, not you too. <laughs> no, 
I'm sorry. The fourth grade. I can't help it. I only learned the first 20 lines, though, but you're dying to hear them, aren't you? No, no, listen, I, the I will fall asleep in me. the first two lines, remember? <laughs> but you told me you only pretended to fall asleep. Oh, I lied. I really okay. will. Okay, okay, I will spare you this one. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> My mother will be ecstatic when she knows that you know that oh, poem. Oh, good. I she will use... love you forever. I can use all the help I can get with your mother. <laughs> Maybe we could even do duets, T.J. Now that I, I would sure never fall asleep through. <laughs> Hiawatha in <and> stereo. <laughs> oh, I'll have to talk to Mildred about it. Maybe I can relearn some of those lines. You could do anything you wanted to. Probably be a little difficult at first. Just have to take it step by step. Go to the New Year's Eve party with me at KVIK tonight. I'd like that very much. <laughs> well, I better go home. I'll see you here at the party later. Okay, see you later. How you feeling? I'm fine. I'm getting ready to go over to the penthouse, and uh, I was wondering if you were still coming with me. Yeah, just as soon as my dad and I finish up our meeting here. Your dad's at World Oil? Yeah, I came in. We had a special conference with some of our stockholders. Well, who's staying with your mom? Vivian's taking care of her. Oh, Mark, do you want me to go over there and be with her? I'd be happy to if she no, needs me. Oh, no. My mom's fine. I think your best bet is to go back to the penthouse and get some rest. Okay. Um, are you still going to go to the party with me? Tonight? Of course I am. Look, I'll meet you back at the penthouse and we'll go to the party from there, okay? okay. I'll catch you later. All right. Bye. Bye. Rena! Hi, I didn't even hear you come in. I just came back to pack up a few things. Looks like you're doing the same. Yeah. It's kind of sad, isn't it? Yeah. Is your mom around anywhere? Uh, she must be somewhere, because we just got back from breakfast. How is she? She's doing remarkably well, considering all things. Tried to get her to go back home to get some rest, but she said no, she had some work to do. Well, I think I'm going to go try and find her, because I wanted to talk to her about something. Ruby, I couldn't help overhearing your phone conversation. Has Grant decided to go back to work now? Oh, well, not officially. He just had to go in today for some stockholders meeting or something. Oh. I was a little surprised when I heard you mention it because he told me that he wasn't going to leave Judith alone now. Well, he doesn't want to, but I guess today he had to. Is she alone in the house now? Well, Vivian's with her, but uh, none of the family are there. Anyway, I'm going to go find your mom. I'll see you later. See you at the party. Yes. Just for the New Year's to come. Forever and ever. <laughs> forever and ever? 
Well, for a long time, anyway. Oh, that's right. Oh, dear, that's wonderful news. Oh. Well, as, as far as I'm concerned, you can stay forever and ever. Well, thank you, Miss Marshall. I bet you Gregory is not very happy with that news at all. Oh, he doesn't look happy at all. I saw you and Ham Page at the telephone last night. You mm -hmm. guys were pretty good together. Oh, thank you. I think we're pretty good together. How come you never told me about you knowing how to play the guitar? Oh, I don't know. I guess there's a, a lot of things that you don't know about me. Well, could you teach me how to play? Of course I can. You got a guitar? Well, no, but uh, maybe I could get one. What do you say, Dad? Well, I guess we could get you one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That sounds like a good idea. Well, look, I got to be going. I just wanted to get Paige home. You don't have to run off, TJ. Why don't you stay and have some coffee with us? Yeah, we could even play a round robin of Astro Smash. Oh, uh, that sounds like a challenge that I can't pass up. Great. I, uh, I should warn you about getting into a game with this young man. He's the master of that Astro Smash. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, it'll be fun anyway. We'll see who comes in second. Oh, oh. 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 Now you got a fight on your hands. Yeah, Where is this game? Look it up. 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 All right, now, what do you do? Well, I'm going to go out to the kitchen and make the coffee. I don't want to miss this. It's going to be better than a Houston Dallas game. Good idea. Slow down. Okay, you guys. Could I talk to you for one minute? Oh, of course you can. I think we'd better get out of their way. Let's get over I here. I figured I should just talk to you now because I know things are going to be real hectic at the party yeah, I'm tonight. sure they will be. Well, what is it, Ruby? Well, now that everything is coming to a close, I just wanted to tell you how much I've enjoyed working with you. Well, thank you, Ruby. That's very nice. I, I really admire everything you've done at KVIK. Well, any station manager would have handled things the same way I did. Oh, Mrs. Bellman, that isn't true. You're very special. You've always been really fair to me, and, and you've been wonderful. You've gone way out of your way to help Billy Joe and Ricky. <laughs> I should be the one thanking them. It's been a pleasure working with them. They've made my job a lot easier. I know Billy Joe was really grateful to you because you took a big chance on him. Not many people would have let him have his own show like you did. No, Billy Joe had a lot of talent. I was just following my instincts. Mrs. Bellman, I think what's really wonderful about you is you... You let people try things that they've never done before. Oh, well, if I do that, it's because I think I have a... get a small secret pleasure out of seeing people grow way beyond what they think they're capable of doing. Well, you have been a real inspiration to me, Mrs. Bellman. And I'm just really sorry that things have to end like this. Thank you, Ruby. And I am so happy for you about your pregnancy. You must be very excited. I am. I just can't believe that there's a little child growing inside me. It is a miracle. Mark must be thrilled at the idea of becoming a father. Oh, he is. The way he's carrying on, you'd think this was the first baby ever to be born. <laughs> well, Ruby, for him it is. <laughs> Vivian! I'm coming, Mrs. Wheeler. I'm sorry, I had to get Nurse Bruckner out of the kitchen. Oh, this is Decker. Stay tuned for the next part of Texas. And now, the next part of Texas. Look out! Look out! Come on, get him! Get him! Huh? Oh, wait, wait. Oh, oh, come on, baby, get back down! I'm really surprised. Uh, Justin, I thought you'd give me a little bit more competition than that. Oh, you? I didn't do that badly, did I? He beat you by 30 points, Dad. <laughs> you beat us both by 50,000 points. Oh, no, you had to remind me. I've just destroyed my image of myself as a big second place winner. How do you think I feel coming in third place? Well, I think it's just beginner's luck. Hey, wait a minute. Now, my technique was pretty darn good. You know, it's all yeah. hand-eye coordination, Justin. Who asked this guy to stay? You did. Oh, that's right, I did, yeah. See, how would you like some more coffee, Mr. Canfield? Oh, no thanks, Doris. I think I've got to take off. I'm going to go and buy myself an Astro Smash so I can practice up and beat the champ. Yeah. Well, maybe I could give you Astro Smash lessons for, for guitar lessons. 
Well, that sounds like a fair trade. You got yourself a deal. Oh, that's great. I'm the one who needs the lesson. Are <laughs> <laughs> well, we still on for six tonight? Yeah. Okay, I'll come by then. Uh, well, that's not too long from now. Why don't I just camp out on the back porch? Okay, buddy. You're perfectly welcome to wait in here. I have a feeling we're going to be seeing a lot more of you in the future anyway. I hope so, Kate. Well, I really got to be going. Justin, yeah. thanks a lot. Sure, I'm glad you could come over, even though I did wind up in third place. <laughs> well, maybe I can uh, give you some pointers sometimes. You know, if you take... Oh, go on, get out of here, will you? <laughs> See you later, DJ. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Boy, isn't it great that Uncle TJ's giving me guitar lessons? Yeah. Yes, that is. <laughs> I think it's pretty great, too, sport. Yep. A lot of great things have been happening around here lately. Aren't you going to invite me in? There's nobody here right now except Mrs. Wheeler. That's who I want to talk to, Vivian. Well, I'm not sure if that's a very good idea considering the condition she's in at all. Vivian, who's at the door? It's, um... Mrs. Decker. Show her in, please. Hello, Rena. Hello, Judith. Vivian, will you please leave us alone? Should I do that, Mrs. Wheeler? Yes, Vivian, it's fine. Thank you. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I understand you're leaving town. I'm glad you decided to come by. You know, it's funny. On my way over here, I was wondering if you would see me. I don't suppose it's just a coincidence that you chose today, the day that I'm alone with Vivian. No, to be honest, I knew that your family wasn't here. I think that's what made me decide to come. Well, now that you're here, what is it you want to say to me? There's something that I didn't get a chance to tell you, Judith. I thought you were very brave when you were in Grant's office at George St. John. The fact that you were willing to risk your own life for your husband's was a very courageous thing for you to do. Thank you. I don't suppose that's the only thing you came to tell me, though. No. No, there is something else. I am leaving town tonight, Judith. I think that's going to be best for everyone. I know that Grant's going to be staying with you, so that should make you very happy. I'm giving up, Judith, but I'm going to ask one thing of you. What is that? Do everything you can to make Grant happy. You really think it's possible for me to make him happy? You must think so. You came to Houston to get him back. You still love him, don't you, Rena? I didn't come here for an argument, Judith. I don't want to argue either. Please answer the question. Do you still love Grant? That's not important. What is important is that you and Grant are together now. I know it's going to be a struggle for you, but What's I think... What's going to be a struggle for me, Rena? It just is. Because I can't walk? Oh. We both know that the only reason Grant is still with me is because I can't walk. This is no time for self-pity. You are a very lucky woman, Judith. You have a wonderful man and three children who care very much about you. Yes, I am lucky in a lot of ways. <sighs> well, I've got to go. Good luck. Thank you. Rena. Yes. Have a good trip.
You know, I've been thinking that I should really get involved in a program like that. I'd love for you to work with me on this. Elena, I'm not trying to push in on anything, but... No, no, no. You're not pushing me. I think that I would really like to help. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, I keep thinking of all that time that I went to visit Joe in prison and how much I felt that I wanted to help. Well, I know you spent a lot of time up there. And I don't think it was just by chance that I did that. No, I really think that I would like to work at the halfway house with you, if that's okay with you. You really want to do this, don't you? <laughs> but it's going to be a lot of hard work. Well, hard work never stopped me before. Besides, if I was with you, I'd, I'd feel like I could tackle anything. <laughs> well, we'd be working together, that's for sure. But, uh, well, I just hope you don't get tired of looking at the same old face uh, day in and day out. I would never get tired of looking at you, Billy Joe. I'd never get tired of looking at you either. If you want a partner, you got one. Well, I want one. I think a deal like this deserves a whole lot more than just a handshake. Hello, son. You look in on your mom and your baby sister? Yep, they're both asleep. That's good. We need the rest. Boy, babies sure sleep a lot, don't they? Oh, yeah. I sleep 12 hours a day, 10 minutes here, 15 minutes there. Yeah. Catherine wakes up a lot, too. Well, I think she wakes up just long enough to wake up her old dad, and then I go in to see how she is, and she falls right back to sleep again. Yeah. It's probably just a game to her. Probably. It was sure fun playing Astro Smash with you and Uncle TJ. You're just saying that because you whipped the pants off both of us. No, I'm not. It was mostly fun because you and Uncle TJ got along so well. <laughs> yeah. Things are just fine between us now, son. So, at midnight tonight, we head into a new year. 1983. And I'm determined that everything is going to be much better for the Marshals this year. I've even made some New Year's resolutions. Why would you make any New Year's resolutions? Well, strange as it seems, son, your old dad hasn't been a perfect person this past year. I'm going to change that. I think you've, you've been a perfect dad. Dad. <laughs> I think I'll be even more perfect in 1983. How's that? Well, I'm not so sure that's possible. I think it is. I couldn't ask for a more perfect son. I bet you don't even have one New Year's resolution for yourself, do you? No, I do have one. What? I'm going to try and do everything I can to make sure that nothing ever separates our family again. Well, I'll work on that one with you. I'll make sure we're never apart. Oh, Gregory. Silver Shadow's been an awful racket in the barn. Is she all right? Oh, uh, what's, what's wrong? Is she winning or something? Oh, uh, well, it's something like, uh, like... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a winning. I guess she wants to go out now. Can we go riding, Dad? Well, sure, son. Uh, why don't you go on down there and saddle up and, uh, <clears throat> I'll meet you down there in a few minutes. <laughs> all right. By the way, Aunt Paige, you do a great winning. Thank you, Gregory. You do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gregory seems like he's in a great mood. Yeah, doesn't he, though? You look like you're in a pretty good one, too, brother dear. I'm happy, Paige. I'm a very lucky man. I've decided I'm a very lucky sister. I was very proud of you today, the way that you treated T.J. T.J.'s a decent man. About time I treated him accordingly. That's a great way to start the new year, Justin. Oh, does it seem possible that a whole year has gone, gone by? It's amazing to me. Yeah. So much has happened to us all. The best thing that's happened this year is that the marshals were brought together again, Paige. Yep. 
That's for sure. <laughs> you know, I never felt so badly as when I was at odds with you and Grandma. Oh, that's all behind you now? Yeah, you worked on yourself and got yourself out of that. The way I see it, it's going to be a new beginning for all of us. I love you, I Justin. love you. I love you. <laughs> well, you better get down to that stable and see the silver shadow before she loses her voice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can't keep Gregory and that horse waiting. <laughs> Do that again. <laughs> New beginning. Yeah. What are you doing out here alone? Where'd Justin and Gregory run off to? Oh, they went for a ride, Grandma. <laughs> Gregory can't get enough of that horse. I think it's the Silver Shadow can't get enough of Gregory. <laughs> that was a perfect gift for Justin to give him. Yeah. Well, is there something that you'd like to talk about? Do you have something in particular in mind? Oh, no. But I, uh... You were in such high spirits when you came in this morning with DJ. I... I just thought maybe there might be something you'd want to talk about. You never miss a trick, do you? <laughs> I've had a lot of practice. All right, I had a fabulous time with T.J. last night at the telethon. Is that what you wanted to hear? You guessed it. <laughs> you two looked as if you were having so much fun together. You sang beautifully, Paige. Thank you, Grandma. <laughs> we did. We had a fabulous time. But I still think the highlight of the evening was Justin and Gregory's song. That was really something to remember, wasn't it? Yeah. Special. <laughs> you know, Grandma... Feels as though I'm starting all over again with T.J. Does it scare you to get involved with him again? No. No, it doesn't. I know now why he had all those problems before. And I really think he's dealt with them. And I also know that neither of us would rush into anything again. It's just... So nice to be friends again. Oh, well, I think that's a good idea. What surprises me is that my feelings can change so much in a couple of weeks. <laughs> well, change is what makes life interesting. Honey, look at the way you've turned your life around. And Justin, too. You know, I, I couldn't believe it was the same man when I saw the way he was with T.J. in there a while ago. I know it. <laughs> I am so proud of my grandchildren. We don't say this very much, Grandma. But we're really proud of you, too. We love you. We all love you so very much. <laughs> I had to go see someone. Anyone I know? Mm-hmm. Judith Wheeler. Why in heaven's name would you want to see Judith Wheeler on your last day in Houston? I had something to say to her, Mama, and I said it. I hope it wasn't too unpleasant. Of course it was. But I didn't go there to pick a fight, so we didn't. Mama, you sure it's going to be all right that I leave before the party? Honey, you have important business in New York. And besides, this way you don't have to sit around and watch Stella redecorate my office. Stella! <laughs> Stella! Mom, I knew that woman was troubled the minute she stepped into KV. I, can't, I just can't believe that they're being stupid enough to make her station manager. Well, stranger things have happened, but right now I can't think of one. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? a little tired. I've got to go upstairs now and pack some things. 
Can I help you? I'd, I'd love to. I know. Just a few last minute things. It's okay. Thank you. Sweetheart? Yes. I wish this year was starting off differently for you. I wish it was starting off better for both of us, Mom. Well, you just remember, things have a way of evening out. You never know what might happen. That's right. I might meet Prince Charming on the plane to New York. Hello, Judith. How was your meeting? Well, let's just say that I'm glad it's over with. Has Ruby come back from the telethon yet? No, but she did call. She's trying to get some rest at the penthouse before she goes to the party tonight. Oh, good. I know I'm a little anxious, but I'm kind of uh, looking forward to that little baby being born. I suppose it's a very important part of your life now. Of course it is. Especially important since you're tied down with me. Stay tuned. Texas will be right back. I'm not tied down, Judith. I'm here because I want to be here. I saw Rena today. What? She stopped by to tell me that she's leaving Houston. I see. She was very nice, Grant. She still loves you. Did she say that? No, she didn't have to. She only wants what's best for you. She wants you to be happy. Judith, I'm going to change my clothes and we can talk about this after. Grant, isn't that what true love really is? Wanting what's best for the other person? Judith, don't do this to yourself. I haven't been able to think of anything else since she left. I don't want to talk about it, Judith. I'm going upstairs to change. Grant. This part of Texas was brought to you by Dawn, the dishwashing liquid that does more than just cut grease. Dawn takes grease out of your way. Mickey, but I don't want you to do anything foolish. Well, I won't. You know, it, it takes a long time to learn to ride well. And it takes even longer to jump those fences and creeks and everything, young man. Well, yeah, but, but you know how to. Grandma says you, you know all about her. That's right. She said you even rode in competition. Well, yeah. yeah. Then you can teach me? Well, I guess so. But I don't want you to do anything foolish unless I'm around. Now, you promise me? Sure. When can we start? How about tomorrow morning, right after breakfast? Yeah! <laughs> I can't think of a better way to start the new year. <laughs> well, well, hello, Hollywood. What a nice surprise. Well, I just dropped by for a minute. I hope it's so, if you don't mind. Of course not. Come on in. I, uh, I wanted to, uh, ask you something. I, I'm planning on coming to the party tonight, but I... Well, I don't want to come if it's going to make you feel uncomfortable. Hunt. Oh, don't be silly. This party is for KVIK, and you've played a very important part in everything we've accomplished. Well, that also means I'm a little responsible for the failure. Uh-uh. Don't. I may have lost the station, but that doesn't mean we failed. I suppose not. Oh. We've done a lot of quality work at KVIK, and in this day and age, that's quite an accomplishment. <laughs> Besides, you made so many friends over there that everybody would be disappointed if you didn't miss, you know, come to the party. Then I'll be there. Good. And who knows, Stella may even offer you your own game show. I mean, uh, well, you could call it um, Vatican Squares <laughs> or... Uh, I think I'll uh, hold out for something a little more ecumenical. <laughs> Hello, honey. Hello, Rena. I'm glad I caught you before you left. I, well, I, I wanted to wish you Godspeed. Oh, thank you. I'm going to miss Texas, but I think I'm doing the right thing. Judith, I'm not tied down. I'm here because I want to be here. 
I talked to Rena today. What? She stopped by to tell me she's leaving oh. Houston. I see. She was very kind. She still loves you very much, Grant. Did she tell you that? She didn't have to. She only wants what's best for you. She wants you to be happy. Judith, I'm going upstairs to change. We'll talk about this later. Isn't that what true love is, Grant? Wanting what's best for the other person? Judith, stop doing this to yourself. I haven't been able to think of anything else since she left. I don't want to talk about this, Judith. I'm going upstairs to change. Grant. Judith. Judith, you're standing. I'm not paralyzed. The New Generation. Judith, you... You're stay. How long have you been able to stand? A few days. Well, why didn't you tell me? Because I was afraid of losing you. Afraid of being alone. Well, can you walk? Judith, you've beaten this thing. Looks that way. Well, what does the doctor say? What? He doesn't know. Judith, he told me about a great rehabilitation program in a, in a hospital up in Fort Worth. We'll send you up there. You are amazing. You're amazing. Look at you. You're standing. You can walk. Yes, Grant. Judith, I want you to get completely well. You are so incredibly kind. You only want what's best for me. Doesn't it bother you that I've been lying to you? Judith, Judith how, how did you find out that you, you could use your legs? I found out the day that I remembered what happened in your office. Well, why didn't you tell me then? Why, why are you telling me now? Because I know I've lost you. What are you talking about, Judith? I know that I could keep you, hold you, as long as I stayed in this chair and went on lying to you, but I wouldn't have your love. I'd only have your companionship. Judith. Grant, please, just, just listen to me. I'm talking about us. You're my wife, Judith. Yes. That's what our marriage certificate says. I came across it the other day in your legal papers. Commonwealth of Massachusetts, June 12, 1956. It was all very legal. But it didn't say anything about love. What do you want, you? Do you love Rena? Then go to her. I have an obligation, Judith. Your obligation to me was fulfilled a long time ago. I know you'd be staying with me out of pity. I think I'm worth more than that. Of course you are. I want love.
I tried, Judith. Yes. I'm sorry. I... Judith, it's too late for that now. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I had come to Houston earlier, before you met Rena. Grant, she loves you very much. I won't contest a divorce. Thank you. Mrs. Wheeler. Excuse me. Mrs. Wheeler, you can walk. This is a miracle. This is a New Year's miracle. You can walk. Isn't this wonderful, Mr. Wheeler? Vivian, you don't know how wonderful it is. I want to call Mr. Mark and Miss Brad. Vivian. We'll do that later. They're going to want to know. I know, but there's something more important right now. <laughs> what could be more important? Mr. Wheeler is going on a trip, and I think you better get John to bring the car around before it's too late. Okay. Okay. Now, so far, you've only seen a very small part of it. I've been to 54 countries. My Aunt Hildy is... No, no, no. I'm not talking about traveling. What are you talking about? Living. A girl your age should... should have a life full of adventures. You should want to explore all the possibilities that life has in store for oh, you. Come on, Justin. That's a whole <laughs> lot of romantic nonsense. Well, yeah, is it? Well, the old business is exciting. It has a whole lot of possibilities. Well... It may be that way to you now, but I wonder if you'll feel the same in 10 or 20 years. I wonder if it'll still have the same adventure for you when, when it's all you know. And it's too late to go back and change your mind. Well, you like the oil business, and, and Ashley likes the oil business. Yeah, but we didn't start out there. You're only young once, Allison. It's a mistake to get all, old too soon. Well, what do you think I ought to do? Well, you know, Ashley told me you were <clears throat> you were interested in the arts. And I heard you sing the other night at the telethon. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I don't think I'm cut out to be an artist. Well, that's not the only possibility. What about uh, being a lawyer or a doctor? Huh? Well, that means that I'd have to go back to school. What's wrong with that? I don't know. It just seems kind of childish. Well, I don't think earning a medical degree is childish. But, you know, actually... I've always been interested in law. Oh, yeah? Yeah, well, the political side. I, I think it would be a lot of fun to run for elective office or, or work at a diplomatic corps. Mm. Well, you need very good credentials for that. Well, I could get into a good school. Well, Ashley said that, uh, that uh, you had a lot of scholarships thrown your way. Yeah, yeah, I did. Listen, if you applied uh, right now, maybe you could get, a, get accepted by the school. S spring semester, huh? Oh, I wouldn't want to go to just any college. Well, which one would you have in mind? I don't know, Yale, Princeton, Harvard. Well, yeah, well, they're not bad, I guess, for Yankee schools. Oh, come on, <laughs> Justin, you don't think I'd go to some Cal college, do you? Ashley went to the University of Texas. Yeah, but I'm not Ashley. I'm real glad of that, Allison. Real glad. <laughs> would anybody like some coffee? Uh, no, Doris, I gotta go up and... And get ready for the party. Oh, me too. <laughs> you mean you've changed your mind? I think I've changed my mind about a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Doris, guess what? I might be going away to school. Was that so? Yeah, I thought it might cheer you up a little bit. Oh, Alice. <laughs> Whatever you decide to do, I just hope it makes you happy. <laughs> oh, me too, Doris. <laughs> Happy New Year! <laughs> uh, goodbye, Rena. You'll be in my prayers. Thank you for everything, hon. See you later. <sighs> Have you, uh... Made arrangements for the rest of your luggage? Yes. Beth said that she would send me everything else that I've left behind. Good. 
Well, Mama, this is it. Come on over here. Oh, boy, am I going to miss you. <laughs> We've come a long ways, haven't we, Mama? Mm-hmm. Now, you are going to see me in New York. Oh, you can count on it. <laughs> I lost you once because of neglect. I'm never going to let that happen again. I, don't, I can't be a very easy daughter to have had. Now, why would you say a thing like that? Oh, Mama. Mama, I've made my share of mistakes. Oh, we all have. Lord knows I've made my share. Remember, I... I wasn't with you when you were growing up, when you needed me most. But now you really are all grown up. And you've learned from your mistakes. I hope I have. That's all any of us can be expected to do. You don't know how much I want to believe that. You have to. Mama, why do I keep making the same mistakes? Why do I always let my pride get in the way? Oh, it was that. my pride that made me make that stupid bet with Justin. Losing Grant? Yes. But it was your pride that enabled you to bounce back from Max's death. And it was your pride that made you one of the top oil executives in Texas. And honey, it's that same pride that's going to make you a success in whatever you want to do with the rest of your life. You really mean that? Oh, yeah. I love you, honey. I love you. And I love your pride. And I wouldn't have you any other way. Oh. Thank you. You're going to be just fine. I'm a little worried about New York, though. I, I'm not sure it's ready for you. Oh, it's a big town. Yeah, well, remember, the bigger they are. <laughs> well, Mama, if you hear it crash, you'll know I'm at it again. <laughs> Wonderful it is to see you. When did you get home? Just this afternoon. Oh, have you heard the news? About Ashley. Oh, it was like a miracle. Well, that's exactly what TJ said. Uh, I stopped by the office on my way out here. Oh, well, Ashley's upstairs getting ready for uh, Vicky's party tonight. I know that she wants to see you. Oh, uh, Kate, in a few minutes, I'd like to talk to you first. What's wrong? Nothing. Is Steve all right? Oh, Steve couldn't be better. Well, what about Barrett? That's what I'd like to talk to you about. Well, I think I'd better sit down. Oh, Kate. Kate, really, there's nothing to worry about. As a matter of fact, I had a perfectly wonderful holiday. Is Barrett still being difficult about Steve's custody? No, no. Uh, the doctors in Colorado have done wonders for Barrett. Really? Oh, I couldn't believe it, but he has completely changed. I spent a, a lovely Christmas with him. I don't understand. He's been kind and considerate, <laughs> and we've laughed so much. I'm glad. You know, I never thought that we could laugh again, but I was wrong. Is Steve going to stay with Barrett in Colorado? No, Steve is coming home tomorrow, and Barrett's coming with him. He's coming here? Yes, he's coming here to Texas to stay. Oh, Jenny, that's wonderful. He's going to look for a small ranch, something he can operate on his own. And, and, and Steve? And Steve will be able to stay with him for a, for a while. Maybe... We've all been through so much, Jenny. Yes. Jenny! Oh, Paige! Oh, hi! I didn't hear you come yes, in. I just got in. Oh, oh welcome back. Thank you. Paige, <laughs> there's such a 
such wonderful news. What? It's your brother. Barrett's well. He's coming home. And Steve's coming with him. Oh, that's wonderful, Jim. Grandma, just think the Marshalls will be back together again. That's right. It's going to be a very happy new year. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been here? Oh, not very long. Do I have to start getting ready now? Nope. Got a while before the party. It's early, yeah? Mm. Good. How are you feeling? <sighs> Sleepy. Actually, I feel pretty good. You must be tired. No, not really. Well, you had one meeting after the other all day long. Yeah, that father of mine, he can be a real slave driver sometimes. Well, we don't have to go to the party if you don't want to. I think it's important. It is. It's Mrs. Bellman's last day at the studio. Then we should go. Well, why don't you lie down here and take a nap with me? Because I don't want to take a nap. But I will lie down. <clears throat> Spend a little quiet time with my family. You know, I never imagined that married life could be this wonderful. Well, married life with you sure turned out to be a little different than I thought it would be. <laughs> Joel, mm. if I ask you something, would you give me an honest answer? Well, now I always do. I'm serious. Yeah. Have I been a disappointment to you in any way? Because if I have, if I should be doing anything differently. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> Joel, this is important and serious. <laughs> Joel, come on. I want an honest answer. Come on. Honey, in my wildest dreams, I, I never could have imagined you to be a more wonderful wife than you are. In every way. Every way? Every way. Mm. <laughs> oh, where are you going? Come on, darling. <clears throat> I gotta go uh, look after that livestock, like I told you. Can't that wait? No. <laughs> Joel, we only have an hour before we have to get ready. Sure would be a shame to uh, waste that hour looking after livestock. Boy, you really are depressed, aren't you? I don't understand that. You've got your memory back. You can walk again. What have you got to be depressed about? Mr. Wheeler is gone. I've given him his freedom. Why? Because he doesn't love me. He loves Rena Decker. Oh. What are you going to do now? I don't know. It doesn't matter anyway. Well, sure it matters. Unless you decided just to give up and sit there and feel sorry for yourself. Well, I guess that's pretty well what I've decided to do. 
Well, I'm not going to be a party to it. Where are you going? I'm going to KBIK. John and I are just going to forget the past and we're going to salute the future. Stay tuned for the next part of Texas. Of Texas. I can't believe that guy has the nerve to just walk in and crash our party like no, this. Ruby. Well, he's got a rag. In a couple of hours, he's going to be owning this place. Yeah, he probably thinks we're going to rip off a microphone or a camera or something. Honey, come on. I don't that guy get to you and spoil the party. Hell, Ruby, the night tonight we're all supposed to have a really great time. It's going to seem kind of strange to leave all this. Oh, I remember plenty of times when you said you never wanted to see this studio again. I had some good times, too. You know, it seemed like only yesterday when uh, my sister Ruby here bowled her way in here with a bouquet of balloons. <laughs> bouquet of balloons? Well, it worked, didn't it? I mean, it got me through that guard's desk and got me to see Phil Roberts. Good, good old days, Ruby. Well, I might still have a trick or two up my sleeve. Here goes again. Yeah. <laughs> what are you planning to do? Nothing, honey. Nothing. Yes. What do you suppose my chances are of getting a tape of Mildred's recitation of High Water? Oh, I think I could have had that arranged. Oh, you do no such thing. <laughs> well, that's too bad. I was hoping to make that an annual event. Oh. I don't suppose they'll be having that telethon here next year. That will be up to Tom. Really such a shame you're losing KVIK this way. Mildred's absolutely right. Sad day for everybody here in Houston. Well, thank you both very much, but uh, I don't think it's that much of a tragedy. I think perhaps it's time for all of us to move on to something new. What sort of plans do you have? Well, I'm thinking of going to London. Oh, Jenny! Jenny! Oh, what a wonderful surprise! I didn't think you'd make it back in time for the party. I miss this for anything. Thank you. I'm just so sorry I didn't get a chance to see Rita before she left. Oh, she left a letter. It's at the house. Well, look who's coming here. Oh, Hello there, no. DJ. Hi. Well, now, hey, hey, DJ. Aren't you excited for uh, so You look lovely this evening. Flattery must run in your family. Only when it's most deserving, you, Mitty. Okay. Mom, <laughs> um, I have made the most amazing discovery about Paige, something that she's been keeping from all of us for a very long time. Oh, God, do you think this is good? Good idea to divulge secrets. Oh, yes, oh, yes, especially the secrets. You're on. At the door on summer evening sat the little Hiawatha. Heard the. That's all right, dear. Sounds of music, words of wonder. Oh, but yes, many wawas <laughs> did the <laughs> <laughs> you can give him some more. That's wonderful, dear. Wherever did you learn it? Well, I in the fourth grade. Oh, well, I had to learn it for a pageant. <laughs> I've never been able to forget it until just now. <laughs> Neither have I. <laughs> but you're wonderful at it, Mildred. I heard you at the telephone. <laughs> well, some people just have an affinity for that sort of thing. You know, you, your forte seems to be singing, Paige. I, I heard you the other evening when you were saving his life. And that other song? Why, you really have a lovely voice. Oh, uh, will you excuse us? We'll see you a little bit later. Ginny, I want you to meet someone. Oh, sure. Is Justin come? Yes, as a matter of fact, he is. And uh, he's bringing Greg. He's going to be here. Yes, I heard, darling. I heard. I never thought I'd see the day when my mother would be anxious to see Justin Marshall. <laughs> Barrett. Paige. Dawn. Courtney, Justin, Stephen, Gregory, and now, now Catherine, Paige, Marshall. It begins again. Hey. Look here, Catherine. Look, you joined the list. You're a marshal now. Signed and certified. You don't care, do you? 
just sleeping away. There you were. You're beautiful, you know that. You look just like your mother. But you're gonna have that martial spirit, I'll tell you, if I have anything to do about it. child. You're a miracle, baby. You know, there was a time when we didn't know if we'd ever see your mama or you again. But your big brother, he never lost hope. He had faith. Yeah. It was his kind of faith that brought you home to us. Catherine? In about four hours, we're gonna usher in a brand new year, 1983. It's gonna be your very first year. It's gonna be a banner year for the marshals. I'm gonna work hard to make it perfect in every way. Because I want you to live in a happy house. A house of love. And Catherine, I don't say everything is going to be blue skies and palomino ponies. We're going to have our dark skies. I can... I can tell you that after all, I'm only human. I'm going to be too strict on you. I'm going to worry when you're out of sight. I already hate all the boyfriends you're going to have. It'll only be because I love you. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Only because I love you. You've been born into a wonderful family. The proud heritage. You've even got an oil well named after you. I took care of that myself first thing this morning. Yes, ma'am. You're a first class citizen of the best state in the Union. got his priorities straight. From now on, my family's gonna be the center of my life. I've realized time goes by quicker than you think, Catherine. I don't intend to miss one minute of watching you and your older brother grow up. be here in the morning. And I'll tuck you in at night. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. You get a good night's rest, Catherine. Starting tomorrow, you and I have a date for a wonderful life. Happy New Year, Catherine Page. Vicky, my dear, at last all my dreams have come true. I have found myself at last. And you know I have come up with the most brilliant idea. I'm going to have a game show, and it's going to be called Drilling for Dollars. Oh, well, that sounds fascinating. Does it concern dentists? Oh, that's a joke, isn't it? Of course not. The whole stage is going to be oil wells, and each contestant will drill. And each time they answer a question, they will drill further. And the lucky one may give a gusher. Well, Tom, you should just love it. Well, it does sound pretty good. Ruby? What are you gonna do? Nothing. You don't even like cheesecake. Nope, I don't. But I thought maybe Tom Brandon would. 
Well, you cannot do a thing like that. Yes, I can, Lurleen. He took away my brother's talk show, he fired Ricky, and he replaced Vicky Bellman with Stella Stanton. And it's going to give me great pleasure to deliver this cheesecake. Ruby! Uh, Tom, this is a private party. Yeah, it's being held on my property. Uh, not yet. KVIK is still my station and will be my station until midnight. Well, aren't you splitting hairs? Uh, perhaps, but um, really, Tom, I think it's in your best interest if you don't stay. Are you asking me to leave? That's exactly what I'm doing. Vicki, I can't imagine what has come over you. Mrs. Bellman, do you need any help? Uh, no, no, uh, thank you, Ruby. I think Tom is just about to say goodbye. Very well, ma'am. No sense in causing a scene. Happy New Year, Tom. <laughs> Thank you, Ruby. I should have taken care of that earlier. Well, you always did have more class than me. Um, you always had more fun. <laughs> I would like to say that I have never seen a display of worst manners. Now oh, shut up, Stella. Oh, uh, Well, look at Gregory. Gregory. Oh, nice to see you, sir. Miss nice to see you. Nice so happy to hear your news. Uh, would you please excuse me a moment? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Thank you, Melody. Tell me, how is Ashley and the baby? No, they're fine, aren't they, Dad? That's right. Now that Ashley's back, everything's going to be just fine. Well, that's what T.J. said. We're so grateful. Now, Master Gregory, I want to hear all about that baby sister of yours. Well, she's real beautiful, and her name is Catherine Page Marshall. She looks a lot like my mom. No doubt about it, Ricky. L.A. is just going to love you. Yeah, pal. I bet you have a great time out there with all those beach bunnies and starlets. Huh? Uh, oh, you think this one's going to have a good time? You just wait to see the effect your little sister has on Alaska. You know, I heard up there that the men outnumber the women too. Two to one. That's not why I'm going. The one is why you bought her a goat. <laughs> I love my goat. Hey, I can understand you getting attached to a, a, a mink or a chinchilla, but a goat? I mean... Here's the Lurleen's goat. That's <laughs> <laughs> like milk out of a champagne glass. <laughs> That's right. You want some more? Mm -mm. No. I might have to drive. The doctors. <laughs> now the doctor said it was good for you. You shouldn't be drinking. I'm serious. To Mark Wheeler, anxious father. Oh, I'll go. Oh, here we go. Now we're talking. <laughs> I told you when the time was right, I'd be able to walk. Just like that? Well, actually, it happened a few days ago, but I've been so busy trying to hold on to your father that I pretended I couldn't let go. What changed your mind? Let's just say that I got tired of a lie. Miss Brett, your mother has done the most wonderful thing. Where is Dad? He's where he ought to be, where he'll be happy. Why isn't he here? Mark, I'm not sure I understand either, but I promise I'll tell you all about it later. Right now, I'm here for a part. Mom, are you sure you're ready? I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Vivian, I think this is something I have to do on my own. Okay, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> well, Kel, surprise! have dreamed that the lovely Mrs. Wheeler would be joining us. Hello, Stella. How would you like to be the first to know the juiciest piece of gossip in Houston? Why, I just love it. Grant and Judith Wheeler are getting a divorce. How tragic. Oh, not really. Well, you know, thank heavens your children are grown. It's really so sad when they're young. Yes, that's true. I think this custody action will probably revolve around world oil. Judith. Hello, Vicki. How wonderful to see you recovered and, and looking so well. Uh, thank you. I know Rena will be very pleased. Rena will be very happy for you. Where's Grant? Where do you think? Judith. Now, I'd like a 
glass of champagne. I'll get you one, Judith. Oh, Ruby, why don't we go together? Did you know she's going to make me a grandmother? Isn't that sweet of her? <laughs> Let's go, daughter. Vicki, I wanted to tell you how sorry I am that you're losing the station. Thank you, Justin. Stay tuned. Texas will be right back. Uh, may I have everyone's attention, please? <sighs> Thank you. Just gather around. <clears throat> well, you all know why we're here. This is the last time that we'll all be together here at KVIK. It could be a sad occasion, but I don't see why it has to be. I'm sorry that things have turned out the way they have. But none of you have anything to be ashamed of. You have all worked very hard, and you have done your very best. And I know, and I hope you all agree with me, that we have accomplished some pretty wonderful things here at KVIK. <laughs> we've met some wonderful people, and we've made some wonderful friends in the process. When, uh, when I first realized that I was losing the station, I kept seeing your faces. All of you that have given so much and have made our efforts seem worthwhile. And I hope, no, I'm certain <laughs> that we're going to have a chance to work together again. In the meanwhile, I want you all to know that wherever you may go, you can look back on our experience here as something very special and remember it with pride. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to Texas! 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 